Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Mountain Blade Warband Anno 1257. And I hope you enjoy the episodes where I drop a little bit of knowledge, because over the next couple episodes we will be speaking about Byzantine army composition at this point in time. We will be doing that as we raid Greece, which you can see here in the background. We are going to sail over there, and because while you raid a village there is some downtime, we'll talk about, again, the Byzantine and at this precise moment Nicene Empire army composition. So let's get over there with my troops, and Sardis is my fife, and someone mentioned that there was a, a Sardis manor, but I do not see it anywhere. So, if you can remember where it was and can tell me about it, I know you're supposed to have a manor because you can build a whole lot of things in a manor that you can't build in a village, but as of right now, I, I have not been able to see anything. So, once again, I want to thank all of you who have been providing me assistance in my playing of the game and my understanding of its gameplay elements. I really appreciate that. I believe I've gotten better. I hope I've gotten better. I have 113 troops, and we are now about to set sail for Greece. Now, one scary thing about this is we may have our own Fife of Sardis raided while we're off raiding on our own, which would be terrible because right now Sardis is actually bringing in quite a lot of money for me. But we'll see what happens. You know, I'm amazed by how a game as old as this has so many different laggy elements. And I think it's just partially the mod, and I think it's partially just bad coding. Because obviously my computer is more than capable of handling stronger games. But yeah, it's just, I just can't get it. So the sound, the, the graphics, it just doesn't work well here. Alright, so let's go to Athenai. It is now nighttime, which is not entirely good because I can't see armies coming at me. Okay, let's take a hostile action. And let's loot and burn this village. So, at this point in time, the Nicene Empire armies and the armies of the Greater Byzantine Empire in the times around this were made up of three parts. There were landholders called pro noiarios, which were mostly heavy cavalry. There were small holding soldier farmers, and there were mercenaries, and they were in opposite order, so oh my goodness. Oh good, they're not coming for me. <laughs> so the mercenaries were the largest part, with the smallholders being the second largest part, and finally the pro noiarios being the smallest part. Alright, we got 165 dinars, and a ton of stuff, let's just get it all. Silk, oil, furs, wool cloth, wine, honey, dyes, actually this is pretty poor village. Normally they have better stuff than this, and a lot of it's perishable, and that's all we can carry. Do we need food? No, I think we're pretty good. Alright, well that's all we have. So our first raid was successful, and now we're going to get out of here because I saw that giant army and I have no idea what they're doing. Boy, they were big. That could have gone very poorly. Let's go to Smyrna. So, but what's interesting is, in a lot of games where you play the Byzantine Empire, they try to force what was going on historically into the game's engine. A good example of this is Crusader Kings 2, where even though the Byzantine Empire did not have heraldic, ancestral fiefs that were passed down and, and a feudal system of dukes and counts, they still worked that in kind of to the empire. This game, though, has some plausible deniability because some of the pro noiarios were wealthy magnates, and they were referred to as Dinatoi, and they rode into battle not just by themselves as heavy cavalry, but with retinues made up of their kinsmen and companions, which were called the Oi Keoi, and also a retinue of troops called the Oi Ketai, which included household mercenaries. So it's conceivable that Marcus Aurelius, in this game, what, what's going on, how come we're not moving? Oh, we are just very slowly. Marcus Aurelius is one of these Dinatoi. However, the Dinatoi generally, their parties were unlikely to exceed 30 to 80 men, 
and most of them were much, much smaller than that. However, you could say that Marcus is just a particularly wealthy or distinguished dinosaur. Since armies were smaller in this period, the emperor himself also had his own oi keoi and his oi ketai, made up of his loyal retinue and family members. He also had a few Varangians, a smaller group than before, and they say that at this period in time, the majority of the Varangians were actually English, not Scandinavian or Russian, and about 6,000 troops were in the standing army. So what should I do here? I'm not entirely sure. Let's go to Smyrna, I guess, and try to sell stuff. We have to hit all of the major cities because they're the only ones. Oh my gosh. Are you Latins? Run. Okay, I'm, they're going to Smyrna. So we're going to actually go to Nicaea. It's just now that I've managed to get some ill-gotten gains. I don't want to lose it to a giant army of Latins. In fact, that's the largest army of Latins I have seen since playing this game. In my test games, they never have that many. In fact, the Nicaeans typically stomp them into the ground. So this is a worrying sentiment that there are that many Latins running around in my lands. Not entirely thrilled about that. But we will go to Nicaea. We'll report that we have seen a large army of Latins, though messengers have probably already reached Nicaea at this time. And we're going to sell as much as we can. 1,000. That's pretty good. So 468. I don't want a club. 405. 899. So something a little cheaper. Honey? Yeah. Beautiful. Armor merchant. Let's go with some. Wow, it's all food, huh? Furs, oil, and wool? Well, sure, that's close enough. Horse merchant, we're going to go with salt, wool cloth, and wine. And the goods merchant finally, oh, he has tons of money. Good, good, good. Wine, honey, dyes, dyes, flax bundle, flax bundle. Butter, butter, butter! <laughs> if you're a South Park fan, you might recall that. 1348. Alright, so we have some good money at this point. Let's go back to the armor merchant. We have 5,000 dinars. Eventually, I'd like to have some... What do we have here? 4117. Oh, this is awesome. Reinforced Byzantine guard armor. But look at the price on that. 138,927. Bear in mind that my land only gives me about 3000 a week. So, obviously the pricing in this game makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, and it's based on nothing whatsoever. I mean, with this amount of money, you could field an army indefinitely that's larger than any of the armies seen by this nation in this period at the same price as some armor, which is really stupid. I think the mod makers just did that so that they didn't want everybody running around with the best armor right at the beginning of the game, but still, it's it's really kind of stupid. And Byzantine Mail will be the next place I'd want to go. It's not actually better, it just looks better, but it's still too much money. Now, Rusty Byzantine Mail, this is actually better a bit. Yeah, so, no, I'm not going to get any new armor. Byzantine Leather Boots are about as good as it gets. Byzantine Boots are 12 leg armor, that's 8, but it costs all the money I have, I'm not going to do that. Battered Byzantine Helmet, 48 head armor, for 40, so it's not that big of an improvement. Scale Gauntlets would be useful. I don't have anything on my hands right now. But again, that's a lot of money. Maybe after we raid a second time. So let's go ahead and head out and go to Chonai. So yes. It's probably good for us to think of Marcus moving forward as a Dinatoy, a magnate pro Noiarios, who is just well known, well connected, has friends in high places, though in reality he doesn't, because if you look at the report of known lords by relation, he doesn't know anybody. I mean, we could know people if I just walked around saying hi, but 
not going to do that. And unfortunately, because our army is so large, we're no longer capable of chasing down bandits because they are faster than we are by quite a magnitude. That's all right, though. Holy Roman Empire has declared war against the Polish principalities. It's probably not going to go so well for the Polish. So again, I appreciate everybody giving me advice on the actual gameplay itself, although I'd love to hear some comments on the history. Whether you have something to add or just comments to make, that would be very interesting. While we travel to Chonai. Oops, I don't know why I haven't been speeding up. I guess I was just falling in love with the sound of my own voice. Go to the marketplace. Alright, I want to keep the grain. We can get rid of the wool, the date fruit. Oh, well, date fruit's kind of good. Ale, interestingly enough, does not provide any morale to my troops. You would think that it would. Definitely want to get rid of the day old chicken. Dried meat will keep, bread will keep. We'll keep one. No, date fruit doesn't provide morale, so I guess you can't eat it, so we'll sell that. And the self bow. We should probably save that until one of my companions has the ability to have a bow. So let's return there. All right. Let's get some cheap horses from my friends here. Most horses aren't very expensive. A heavy round. See, what do I have? I have a heavy step horse worth 29. Not very good. I don't know what all this means besides armor, but 18, 44, 51, 12. So generally better than these guys. So my horse, despite not being worth a lot of money, is roughly worth about 1200 if I were to buy it. Probably more. So we'll get inexpensive horses for my guys. How about two heavy round seas and I guess a lame courser is better than a heavy pack horse. Oh, a heavy pack horse only requires riding one. Oh crap, what do these require? Okay, one. Okay, woof. Heavy pack horse, I guess. Okay. Let's head out of here and let's... Oh, we can't meet with our guys. We have to leave first. Okay, we'll do that. No problem. This might be a little tedious party. Helga, let me talk to you. Let me see your equipment. Very well. It's all here. You now have a horse. I can't use it. Oh, great. You don't have riding. So I'm walking around with three horses that I can't even use. Well, hopefully if you guys ever gain a level, which you rarely ever do, I will give you all riding skill. How about you, Tycon? You can't have a horse either. Well, Jiminy. Never mind. Okay, fine. That leaves us with Nestor. Oh, we have four companions. That's right. Forgot about... Oh, hey, man. I love horses. They're so pretty. Can you ride one? You can! Alright! You have a horse. Good for you. Alright, and finally, our Balt, whose morale is below average because he is a Balt. But can he ride a horse? He cannot. Okay, so we're just going to hang out with two horses until we can get these gentlemen to a point where they can ride them. We also have some upgrading to do. All right, so our average weekly cost is a little under 2,000, but we have 4,000. And I think we're ready to go raiding again. And since all the Latins appear to have come over here to fight, they should have left the land open. So let's go back. Actually, I am going to zoom out a little bit because I want to make sure we can stop, if necessary, from being surrounded by the Latins. Probably we want to go to Corinthos. It's so interesting to me that in this game, Corinth and Athens are represented by tiny villages. I mean, maybe they were at this point in time. I know in the previous past, they were large cities. There was a lot of depopulation during this time, not only due to various plagues, but also warfare. But still, the fact that Patras, which I don't even, I'm not even familiar with, is larger than, and now Larissa was a Macedonian city, I believe. So that makes kind of sense. Let's see, Patrasius is no longer under siege. Smyrna, okay, they were 
sieging Smyrna. Hopefully they'll leave Sardis alone. Because that would be very unfun if they decided to attack Sardis while I was away. Athenai is still in ruins. There we go. Speed that up a little bit. Let's go over here to Corinthos. I just want to be careful that we don't get surrounded by enemies. Okay, Corinthos. Let us take a hostile action. Loot and burn the village. Okay. Now we're just going to have to wait patiently, and hopefully we will not get attacked. And oh, look at, there's, there's our people. I think we're going to Patras. Those were the Nicaeans. Excellent. So now we have the cover we need to plunder Corinthos. Let's see, the Republic of Pisa, making them easier for them to go to war against the Guelphs. The Guelphs? Sounds like Greek elves. Guelphs. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Your relation with Nicholas de Saint-Omer, Seigneur de somebody, is down. Well, that's a shame. That really hurts my feelings. Tools, furs, salt, linen. You can see that raiding villages is quite lucrative, especially compared to running around and fighting bandits. Still, though, there aren't that many villages, so you have to do a lot of raiding to get to where you need to be. I wish I could just give this to my companions. Why can't they carry bread and fish and stuff? Apparently they cannot, though. So, that was Corinthos. So now... We are going to try to get home and sell our ill-gotten goods. But that will happen in another episode. So, once again, I'm Marcus Aurelius. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.